Anyway, I want to uh, stick with Alfa Romeos, if I may, for the moment, because what we've got here is a 147 GTA, okay? Now, it's been breathed on by a company called Auto Delta, who've enlarged the V6 engine from 3.2 to 3.7 litres. So, James, would you like to hazard a guess at how much power it's producing? Still front-wheel drive? Oh, it's front-wheel drive. Well, most people agree that the limit for a front-wheel drive car is about 250 horsepower. 250. Wrong! 328. 328? 328. does 175 miles an hour. It's the most powerful front-wheel drive car ever made. Have you had that on the track? No, but I know a man who has. He's thick, he's quick, and he'll give it some stick. But most important of all, he's expendable. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stig. Okay, oh dear, look at all that wheel spin. I don't think this is going to be a lap so much as a live epitaph. Front wheels don't just have to do the steering, they've got to harness all those angry horsepowers and look at that understeer. Now, Auto Delta have fitted a uh, trick differential which is meant to make the power easier to handle. It seems to be working there. I think it's a bit like putting a damp dishcloth over Mount Etna. A token effort, I think, to say the least. Here we go, up to the hammerhead. This could be the end of Stig as we know him. Oh dear, it's taken that corner like a shopping trolley full of rock. So, is he going to lift for the follow-through? Let's listen. Yes, he does. Even Stiggy's not that stupid. Um, now, remember, this Alpha has about as much power as a Mitsubishi Evo FQ, which is four-wheel drive, and this isn't penultimate bend. That's looking quite tidy, actually. Yes, I think he's getting the hang of it. Last corner. And there he goes across the line. Now, now the Stig told me afterwards that if you turn into a corner in that car with no power on, you go in the field, and if you turn into a corner with the power on, it wrenches your arms out. But even so, he went round in one minute, 30 seconds. In there. 130. Now, hang on. That means our theoretically undrivable front-wheel drive car is actually quicker than the four-wheel drive Impreza. Yeah. But more importantly, it's 1.8 seconds quicker than a rear-drive BMW X. Pilot, that in that kind of situation, they would have just used the, uh, the cannon on me and cut me in half. Oh, nice. With the cannon. <laughs> nice. But missile lock, this thing can actually evade it. It's phenomenal. That is incredible. But who'd like to see what happened when the helicopter did what it's supposed to do and pop up from behind some trees two miles away and have a go at him from there? Yes. Yes. Target, by line of sight. Target identified. Tracking. Radar locked. Missile armed. Firing. Two, one, impact. Target destroyed. Was, that was almost perfect. Just one thing, how come you're not in little tiny bits? Think about it. This is the British Army. Here they are, in fact. The guys that were in flight. There's the guy that flew the oh, helicopter. Well done, by the way. That was incredible. <laughs> the important thing you have to remember, being British and not American, they don't shoot their allies. Oh, you're right. Yes. <laughs> the Elise has managed to evade missile lock in the track. But how will it get on against all the other cars we have around here on the track? Time, I think, to move over to DEFCON STIG. Mm. Away he goes. Lots of wheel spin there on what is a slightly damp track. Now, straight line power could be the exceeders at Clooney's Hill, but it really will make up for it through the bends. Look at that. The Stig's bought a sort of power ballad album, which he wants to play for us over this series. Hasn't affected his driving, though. He's always pushing it! OK, down to Hammerhead. See, look how it just sits on the lines, flat out. Look at that! Look at it! It's unbelievable! Coming to the follow-through. Is he going to lift? Is he going to lift? Absolutely flat out through the follow-through, which is unbelievable. Nearly slick tyres on wet tarmac. Should be tricky. Looking good so far. Can he keep it together? This is the penultimate corner. Is he going on the grass? No, kept it off. The final corner. Oh, it's so neat. Tiny and across the line. You've got to bear in mind that was a 1.8-litre car, Toyota engine, yeah. virtually slick tyres on a wet track. So it would be 
unbelievable if it went sort of faster than a Honda NSX Type R, you know, 131.6, yeah? Yeah. And it would be ridiculous if it went faster than a 911 Turbo, did it in 131 on a wet track. Yeah. It went round in one minute, 26.9 seconds. That's that is... amazing! That's the sixth fastest car we've ever had here. And it's a 1.8. That's astonishing. And this has been quite an astonishing show. So how's it going to get on? Away he goes. Not much fuss there, lots of traction, almost no drama at all. Yes, it's this week's Power Ballad from Whitesnake. Nice. And here we go, into the first corner, stick keeping it perfectly balanced, right on the edge there. Down to Chicago, coming in very fast, hard on the brakes, very hard. Turning in, keeping it really tight to the line. That is pretty much perfect. Right, up ahead now. Here we are. Ooh, front engine car will understeer. No, not a hint of it. And listen to that. And a bit of oversteer there on the way out. Glorious. We're coming to the follow through. Very powerful car. Surely he's going to lift. Is he going to lift? Look, his air brakes up. He's actually braking. That's how fast he's going. I think that's a first through there, but will it hurt the time? That's what we've got to know. Two bends to go. That is very smooth. The car's doing the hard work. Last corner. Little bit of showboating there. Sticking across the line. Now, these are the times it's got to beat. 123.7 for the Lambo, 123.8 for the Zonda, 123.9 for the Koenigsegg. And it's got to beat the GT3 as well, which... Yes, very, it has. It will beat that. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, it has yeah. beaten that. It has done it in one minute, 20 seconds, point 0.9. It hasn't just beaten it. OK, he's scrabbling off the line. Traction control computer is off, leaving just the raw processing power of the Stig's foot. First bend, tire squeal as he loads up the right front wheel. Very, very cleanly out of there. Shocking music pelting into Chicago. That is unbelievably neat. Not just 182 brake horsepower, the Clio also has nearly 150 torques, so it really lugs out of the bends. Hammerhead normally shows up front wheel drive cars. This one, though, has got special Michelin Exalto tyres. They were actually developed specially for this car, and clearly they are working. This car has the power to weight ratio of 168 brake horsepower per tonne, same as a Lotus Elise. This is looking very good. There he is, cocking his little wheel there, waiting for the vicar to come. And across the line in, a 1 minute 33.8, which actually is pretty good. That's not bad. It's only half a second off that 3.2 litre Golf yeah. Labrador. Yes. And way faster than the Mad Dog Alpha 147 GTA. Rabbit thing that it. That's not bad for a little puppy. No. So to find out if it worked, we handed it over to our colleague and our driver also. The shtick. <laughs> OK, a little smoke off the line and away he goes. Now the stick's got the hard top on, which should help the aerodynamics, make it faster on the straight. This is the first bend though. It's like the tail's coming out a bit. That is surprising. Oh, yes, of course, it's golden earring. Crazy Dutch music and a crazy Dutch car. Coming up to Chicago. And it's trying to oversteer again by the looks of things. Big question is really, how will the Spiker fare around Hammerhead? A bit wobbly under braking. This is the real test of understeery cars. No, he's gone very sideways there. Very sideways. Seems like in their attempts to get rid of understeer, Spiker seemed to have brought on roll oversteer. Mind you, he's flat through, follow through. And still flat. Not a lift. Two more corners to go. Time over the first half suffered for the oversteer. Can he make it up in the last little bit? A bit more sliding there in Gambon. And across the line in one minute 27. Point Right, yes. On these two. What yeah. we need now on them is the Top Gear lap times. Absolutely. We've got an Italian car and a German car, so what we really need now is a fair-minded English umpire. 
Bring him out. Stiggy Bird. <laughs> Off the line there, plenty of wheel spin. Uh, naturally, the Ferrari is in race mode, which firms up the suspension, speeds up the gear changes, and backs off the traction control. Except this is the Stig, of course, and he's got that turned off. Sadly, he hasn't got the stereo turned off. Um, yes, this car is a lot more intelligent than the man behind the wheel. Looking good so far, though. Into Hammerhead, any understeer? Let's have a look. Absolutely none at all. Into the follow-through. Oh, he lifted off, and the Ferrari got all twitchy there. It may be packed with computing power. That 360 is still a snorting stallion at heart. That's the second to last bend. That's the hard one. Into Gambon corner. Come on, come on, come on. And across the line, in. Yes. Go on. OK, look, here's the lap board. Yes. The McLaren Mercedes from last week, 120.9. I'm going to beat that. No. These are the big heavyweights, OK? We've got the Lamborghini Murcielago, 123.7. Zonda, 123.8. Koenigsegg, 123.9. Yes. Ferrari CS, 122.3. No. That is... That is some guy. OK, so to the Porsche. Well, <laughs> you couldn't find any difference between them in terms of performance, all right? So let's see if the Stig can. Here we go. <laughs> Away he goes. Now, there's no fancy electronics here, remember, just the natural traction of having the engine right at the back. Already looking mighty fast into the first corner. Plenty of tyre squeal. Oh, this is what it's all about, just a raw, simple car and a raw, simple driver right on the edge. Through Chicago, this is very smooth. The tail kept nicely in check. Hammerhead is coming up now. The 911 has so little weight over the front, it might understeer, but it doesn't. He's got the tail out. Now, follow through. Lifts off on the approach, but the Porsche stays perfectly planted. That is old-fashioned mechanical grip for you. Towards the finish, the 911's got a hell of a job, remember, to beat the 360's time. Up to the last bend. He's got a, got a bit of a drift on there, and across the line in. You might not believe this. One minute. It's one minute 22.3 is to what beat. the Ferrari did. Yep. One minute 22.3. It's exactly the same. Yeah. OK, this is the big one. Masses of wheel spin off the line, down to the first corner. He has got to tread carefully. He knows that that big V10 landmine will bite. I am actually surprised he's playing his power ballads today because, really, he has... Look at that through Chicago. He's gently on the power, doesn't want to lose it. He really doesn't want to lose it. Bit of a wiggle, he's OK, coming up to the hammerhead. This is where he spun it before, cannot afford a mistake now. He's already off the SLR's pace at this point, but now... This is maximum attack mode. He's really opening the taps now, really, really working that manual gearbox, ringing out every millisecond advantage over the automatic McLaren. This is the second to last bend, hard on the ceramic brakes, keep it steady, he's measuring out the power. Gambon corner. Oh, he's pushing it now, and there he is! OK, the McLaren Mercedes did it 120.9. Yes. We know that. Go on. Which is pretty fast it's compared amazing. to all the others. Yes. Yes. And Porsche. Yes. Got it here. One nineteen point 